Uh, good morning. My name is David Moore, and I'm the uh, chair of the Educational Studies Department in the Patton College of Education and Human Services at Ohio University. I wanted to thank Terry and Pete for doing that interview for us. We have a few updates uh, that we'll get to after the next presenter uh, on our schedule. But what, right now, we'd like to move into our to our next pre presenter, who will be Roberto Mafaletto. Roberto is the director and founder of the VASA Project, an online international media studies center. His most recent photography book, books include Berlin Diary and Threshold Crossing. The title of his presentation today is VASA, a Global Media Education Project. Roberto is a past president of the International Visual Literacy Association and co-founder of the IVLA International Visual Literacy Research Symposium. Hello, is, this, is my audio working on this? Hello? Okay, Jim, thanks. I want to thank the, the organi organizing group for inviting me to take part in this. Uh, it's a real opportunity to hear some good ideas and to use the technology in ways that um, we have these kind of opportunities for doing it. Um, I know we, we were, we're over time a little bit, so I'll, let me get right into my talk. Um, as the title of my paper or my presentation says, it's a global a visual literacy, a global model for reaching out, and that's the VASA project. What the VASA project primarily is is a oops, excuse me, there um, is an online media center that focuses on photography and the digital arts. Before I get into the talking about the VASA project to give you a context for what's happening, what we see is on the screen right now the uh, iPhone and the iPad. And um, in a way, everything has changed. These are bookmarks in a sense. Everything has changed with the appearance of the smartphone and the tablet. We see, we see what's coming down the line is the end of books as we know them. Now, I don't mean books as a as a um, a form for putting together ideas and stories, etc. But as a physical object, the book is basically dead. Um, we yeah. Uh, somebody else's microphone is on. Hey, I'm picking it up. Okay, but basically, as we look at music and how it went from uh, phonographs to tapes and eight tracks, etc., um, we see that it's now all digital, that those older technologies, which were new to, newer technologies, are all gone. We see that the change in education going from large lecture halls um, to one-to-many delivery, that's coming to an end also. Now, universities are dragging their feet on this because they're tied into kind of a 18th and 19th century way of thinking about how we educate people and how we engage people. Um, but that will eventually go away. In a sense, uh, we know that we are being redefined by the technology. We define it and it redefines us. Between tablets and smartphones and social networking, we see everything is changing. So I think as we begin to deal with accessing images, accessing archives, education, communication, etc. We really have to think about how we are being redefined by it as we define it. Okay, within that context, um, the VASA project started two years ago. It's an outgrowth of my own work in distance education. Um, about 12 years ago at Appalachia State University, where I'm a professor there, um, I was invited to redesign a concentration in telecommunications, and I said I'll do it as an online program. We now have, over those 12 years, an online international master's program on global education, excuse me, new media and global education. We carry roughly 40 graduate students in this program. The instructors are in Poland, Germany, the Netherlands, and the United States. I am currently in the Netherlands in a city called Arnhem. And I've been teaching from Europe and uh, various places. And that's, what, and that's what's interesting about the online education model is that you can teach from anywhere and you can learn from anywhere. 
Okay, so out of that growth and interest, uh, I reached back into my roots of visual literacy and my uh, work in fine art photography and I decided to build the VASA Center. And again, VASA is an online media center that is uh, focused on photography and the digital arts. This is the front page from it. I'll give you the URL on this at the end. And if we look at the VASA project right now, again, this is all online. We have workshops, we have certificate programs, and the certificate programs are in the teaching of photography and also Im image archive management. We have a global writing project. We are scheduling now uh, on-site workshops. We have one coming up in April in Sardinia, Italy, over Easter week. Uh, we have uh, gallery talks by artists, which are archived, and I'll be giving you some samples of this. We have online exhibitions, which are then archived. We've just started an e-publication bookstore, and we have a number of affiliates and internship programs. A sample of our workshops, they range from areas of, uh, as I said, image archive management. We have workshops on the criticism of photography. We have uh, workshops on the teaching of photography. Uh, business of art, what's not being offered this spring are the media theory uh, workshops. Uh, a man named Alan Shapiro, a leading theorist in Boadar and others, uh, teaches, a, teaches a program for us on uh, new media theory and quantum theory and he comes out of Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, we also have an instructor in Milan, Italy, at the Art Institute there teaching for us. So what we're doing is modeling and building a, the potential that's offered to us over the internet to network not just faculty but students together. And in each of the uh, workshop pages, there's information and descriptions um, about the workshop. And again, Students come in from various areas of the world. We've had workshops with students from Slovakia, the Netherlands, Canada, and the United States. We keep the workshops to about 10 people to build interaction. Uh, one of the things we do is we use Skype for our interactive meetings. We try to build as much interaction as we can. And that comes out of my thinking about distance learning is it's all about your philosophy and your theories about learning that begin to drive the design of your environment. Okay, it's not a self-paced instructional environment, it's an interactive constructivist model. We have exhibitions. And what's interesting about the exhibitions is we form what's called like an electronic catalog. Normally when you go to a museum or a gallery seat exhibition, there's a paper catalog there with information about the artist, maybe some, um, some writings, etc. Well, what we tend to do with the VASA project is in the electronic catalog, our essays links out to other material that relate to the photographer or to the work being shown, uh, interviews, artist statements, uh, etc. Okay, we're now linking into with particular artists uh, videos that are about them on YouTube. So the idea is that this becomes a very rich and uh, dynamic environment uh, for teachers, students, researchers, as well as just viewers to begin to use. And this is one of the galleries we have. Uh, we, we show the work in two different formats. One is more like a contact sheet or a proof sheet, and the other one is a more linear process. This is the other format we have. And then what it is you work through in the more traditional way, one image at a time. Transmedia is primarily, it's, it's a, you can see there's a global writing project. What we're encouraging uh, people to do who are involved with transmedia is to write about photography, digital arts, or art in general uh, within your own geographical area. The vision is between three and five, six years from now, we'll have writers at every continent and every major city in the world contributing to this collection and archive about what is happening in those areas. So it becomes a real resource. And this gives you a sense here, just looking at our North America archive, um, from more recent ones from East Carolina University, uh, interview with Salvatore Sanchicho, um, etc. 
And this is what one of the essays looked like. What's interesting about this is a visual anthropologist, um, Alan Teller, out of Chicago, went to India to trace the foundation and roots of a particular set of photographs he found at a garage sale in Chicago. The photographs were made post-World War II around 1946, and he went back and did his research, and he, he wrote a number, about 12 different entries, as he was spending his time over there meeting people, going to places, tracing the roots of these photographs. And he shared this on, online in Transmedia as he was doing this. We have gallery talks. And these gallery talks are artists talking over a webinar similar to this, but a different program. Uh, they're recorded and then put into an archive for future access. One of the artists that um, is shown here, Toon Velders, uh, was a vice president of the Visual Literacy Association. He was also very much involved in working on the planning international symposiums and research for visual literacy. And he just passed away about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, but Toon uh, has been involved with IVLA since all oh, the early 90s. We've just started an e-publication bookstore, and there's two parts of this bookstore. Uh, one is e-portfolios. As we all know, like we look at uh, video and we look at sound, uh, that everything is being digitized and being experienced in completely different ways. Uh, my sense is, my feeling is that images uh, in the future, in the near future, will be collected by museums, libraries, galleries, and individuals in a digital format. Libraries are already doing this, or excuse me, museums and galleries are doing this too, where they don't provide access to the research center or to the original work, but they provide it online. Um, and, I, and what we're trying to do here is encourage image makers to create a digital portfolio on a particular theme or topic and then make it available in the bookstore at, as I like to play with, iTunes rates. Um, and what people do here is they download say they, the work by Joe Orfeo, and they can put it on their computer, they can put it on their iPhone or smartphone or their tablet now, um, and look, look at the work, enjoy the work. So for example, if you wanted to look at, if you were collecting the work of Diane Arbus or a photojournalist, what you might do is take your memory stick off the shelf instead of a book, and you put it into your computer and you or your tablet now, and you would basically look at the work of photojournalists. You would sit back with your glass of wine and basically look at it as you one would look through a book. But it also provides a very good educational environment to where students can access work, do research on photographers, research on particular genres, and um, uh, have access to it in a very inexpensive way. And instructors could put together a collection which they could use, as we used to put together slide trays, uh, but put together work on photographers uh, and use them in classes. So there's a range of uses for digital work. We also have traditional books, and we're working with small book publishers, individual publishers. Uh, if you think about Blurp and Ludo.com, uh, people are producing books, and they're bypassing the normal way by which books are published and distributed to making their own. Um, and you know, it's called just-in-time printing, in a sense. And uh, so we're distributing these books also. For people. And of interest is the one in the far left corner. Uh, it's the history of 20th century European photography, a new book that just came out of Slovakia. We will be carrying back issues of the Journal of Visual Literacy. Uh, we're, we're a little late in getting up the listing, but they'll be up pretty soon where people can just download the digital files or purchase the, uh, the, the books itself. We have a number of certificate programs. Uh, one again is an image archive management, and this is a, a year and a half program. Uh, part of that is where the students actually work with a real collection. So for example, there's a small um, historical society in Cedar Falls, Iowa, and uh, they will go there and work with the, the historical society and also educate them uh, as they're developing their own skills on setting up a archival collection um, uh, for them, okay, and then leave that, and and their staff will also be trained and educated in how to do things. But this also is a career move for people to begin to look into uh, consulting and work with um, collections. And we have one on the teaching of photography. 
which turns out to be very popular with current teachers. Uh, what they tend to do is they take these workshops, and they're five-week workshops, um, to get new ideas, to exchange ideas. And again, we're bringing new people from, in this case, all over the United States to come in, to come in together, which before the Internet was impossible to do and our on-site workshop in Italy. We have some future ones planned for New York and El Salvador and Krakow and Puebla, Mexico and Bucharest. We have interns. Uh, we've had about 20 interns going through. Currently we have interns from Portugal, Romania and the Netherlands and the United States. Okay. These are unpaid internships. Our staff comes from different parts of the world as I mentioned earlier. Um, and if you go to the VASA page, you can go through and see roughly the 22 faculty and staff members we have. Okay, that was a quick run through. Uh, I know we're, we're, we, got, we got off schedule a little bit, but if you want to visit the VASA project, that's the, ad, um, the address is vasaproject.com. You can email VASA or you can email me directly, uh, roberto at vasa-project.com. We're also working now at IVLA conference coming up in early October to uh, broadcast their keynote speakers through uh, a webinar system. So if you're interested in finding out about that, you may want to just write me and I'll put you on the list to let you know more about it. Or I'm asking the group to organize this to put together a, um, um, the mailing list, which if people are okay with that, we'll, we'll just let you know about the Visual Literacy Conference. Okay, um, that's that's it. Okay. <laughs> okay, I hear somebody talking there. Okay, the audio is breaking up. Um, but you know, can I speak about the uh, essay archives? Oops, just lost that. Let me bring this back up. Okay, the essay archives, um, I think you might mean the video of the uh, artist talks, those archives. Uh, basically, we have a number of photographers and educators and visual theorists uh, who have uh, contributed to it. They've made these webinar talks, uh, which are on the Internet and global in nature, and we've been doing them for free. Uh, that may change because of the economic times in the States, um, but basically, uh, those are stored and they're in video format, so anybody can go and watch and uh, listen to the work, say, of Toon Velders, of um, Veldemir, who's in um, Bratislava. Um, there's a whole range of people there. Okay, are there any other questions? Yes, I can answer questions. I'm, I guess we're going to put them in the chat, and I'll read the question and then attempt to answer it. Okay, do we have any questions? Well, let me get a quick comment about the title of this um, webinar. Have you read a good picture lately? Um, you know, a couple of things that need to be unpacked there is the reading of images, um, which And also, also the notion of good pictures. What is the notion of a good picture? Is it socially defined, historically defined? We saw a lot of interesting pictures from the White House now um, give us a more of a different kind of look inside. But the question is how much of those are really edited in and out and how much of it is um, from a political perspective? Would we see the same pictures with George Bush, Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton, just different actors? Okay, um, are there any questions? <laughs> 